Hello, my name is Miss Hignett. I'm one of the Oncoplastic Breast Surgeons from Mid Cheshire Hospital's NHS Foundation Trust. And I'm here today to talk to you about nipple discharge, the etiology and the management. I think with nipple discharge, it's important to try and break it down to physiological and pathological. The majority of the nipple discharge patients we see in the new patient clinic are physiological. 5%, however, tend to be more of the pathological type, and those are the patient group that we want to be seeing in secondary care if they do require further investigation. They tend to be associated with a 1% to 15% risk of an underlying associated malignancy. So it's this group of patients in secondary care we wish to focus on. But to identify that, I think it's important to know the types of nipple discharge there are, and to do this, I've broken it down into three groups, and I want to talk about each group in turn. So if we start with physiological, Physiological is tending to suggest to us that the duct system is working. It's where you can have bilateral, multiductal, it's usually serous, milky, or even yellow in colour, and it tends to occur with patient stimulation of the nipple. There are other causes, such as being pregnant or postpartum, hormonal fluctuations, but the majority tend to be associated with duct ectasia or periductal mastitis. And again, these conditions can be associated with smoking. Physiological discharge does not need any further investigation. The patients can be reassured and don't need a referral to secondary care. If we then look at galactorrhea, again, this could be broken into three groups. You have the physiological hyperprolactinemia, the drug-induced hyperprolactinemia, and the non-physiological hyperprolactinemia. So looking at the first group, this is where nipple discharge can occur in the neonates or pregnancy or postpartum phase hormonal fluctuations and can be caused by nipple stimulation itself. Again, this is physiological normal discharge and doesn't require investigation. The drug-induced hyperprolactinemia, this is where the medication causes either a hypersecretion of hyperprolact uh, sorry, of prolactin levels, or they can actually deplete dopamine either directly or as a rebound effect. And therefore it's important when we assess patients with nipple discharge to know what medications they're on, as some of those medications may just need adjusting. And then we move on to the final group, the non-physiological hyperprolactinemia, of which 40% are idiopathic. In this group, this is where you have your pituitary adenomas or hypothyroid or other chronic conditions that can cause nipple discharge. And again, they don't need a referral through to the breast clinics. If we then focus on the pathological group, this is the group of patients we do want referring through to secondary care. These tend to have spontaneous nipple discharge, usually unilateral, non-lactational, and it can be bloodstained or dark in colour. Again, it can be associated with conditions such as duct ectasia or periductal mastitis, but the majority may be caused by something known as an intraductal papilloma, which is a small wart within one of the ducts, or even a small minority may have an associated underlying malignancy. And these are the patients, therefore, that do require triple assessment and may need to go on and have a total duct excision for both diagnostic and treatment purposes. So in primary care, it's important to elicit the history. The duration of symptoms is important. Is it unilateral? Is it bilateral? Is it single duct? Is it multi-duct? What colour is it? And does it contain any blood? It's important to know if they've got other medical problems going on and other medications that they're taking to try and eliminate other causes of the nipple discharge. It's also important to perform a more peripheral examination. So looking at the thyroid or for any neurological symptoms, again, looking for possible causes of the nipple discharge itself. And that brings us on to examination. It's really important to examine not only both breasts and under both arms, but the nipple itself and try and elicit the nipple discharge to see if it is mainly on expression, if it's single duct, multi duct, what colour it is, and whether there is any blood that's present. And then performing a thyroid examination or even a neurological examination if we're suspecting there may be other causes for the nipple discharge. Management of physiological discharge is reassurance. This is the group of patients that do not need to be sent through to secondary care. The advice we tend to suggest to these ladies is to avoid any nipple stimulation as this can cause further nipple discharge and to help with smoking because smoking does seem to have an association with nipple discharge. It's important to emphasize that they do still need to examine themselves and if there's any new changes to obviously represent to the practice for assessment. It's important we look at other comorbidities and medications and make sure that they're not contributing to the symptom of nipple discharge and always check the prolactin levels as the patient may need referral and investigation to the endocrine team. 
So it's the pathological nipple discharge that we want to see in secondary care. These are the patients with that spontaneous unilateral nipple discharge that's blood stained. Beware, it may be associated with red flag signs such as a lump or retraction of the nipple or even skin changes such as powder orange. I want to point out men with a normal prolactin who are non-pubertal and have nipple discharge also need referral to ourselves. If, however, the prolactin levels are raised, they may need an endocrine referral. I'm going to time post you at this stage to the GM Cancer website, but also highlight that any referrals to ourselves with nipple discharge in that pathological group should be sent to us via the suspected cancer and symptomatic breast referral form. On this slide, you can also see the pathway for management of nipple discharge. This is a nipple discharge algorithm that's been created to help direct you and signpoint you with those patients that do need referral and those that may need further investigations or even a referral through to the endocrine team. So in summary, please refer all patients that are presenting to you with any pathological nipple discharge. Always consider other causes such as medication or underlying endocrine causes. Patients with physiological discharge don't require referral through to secondary care, but will require reassurance and may need help with other causes of the nipple discharge, such as smoking cessation. And just be cautious in men, make sure we do check their prolactin levels and determine if they need to either come to ourselves in the breast clinic for further assessment or to the endocrine team if their prolactin levels are raised. I'm happy to take any questions. <laughs>